Right now, we know that a lot of you across the region are hurting. You're dealing with questions from your kids. I did when I got home last night about this tragic event. Joining me live now, Dr. Mari Kurahashi, a psychiatrist with Stanford Children's Health. Thank you so much. So this is a trauma. It's not only on television, but it's spreading all over social media. That's where our kids are having the conversation. How can we as adults help our kids? Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I think that as horrible as these tragic events are, it's helpful for parents to know that there are a lot of protective factors that can help decrease children's stress. Um, parents can create a protective, safe, nurturing environment, which really helps mitigate the stress of such traumatic events. And what I mean by that is um, being open to conversation, uh, being emotionally supportive, nurturing, having a warm environment at home can be very helpful uh, in supporting our teens. And you know, those questions that we ask our kids right after school when we pick them up or when they walk through the door are so key because they open up the conversation. I want to tell you what I ask my kids because I have a feeling I'm not doing it right and I'm just going to lay out my mistakes right here on live television. I always say, did you have a good day or was your day great? But I almost feel intuitively as we drill down on the subject of youth mental health that I'm casting a net that I expect that they're going to answer with a positive answer. What is the dialogue for that first question when our kids walk through the door? Hey, I love your question. And I think most parents can relate to what you're saying. Um, and I think it's so helpful for us all to examine what are we, what are the messages that we're sending our children? And so being able to talk with our children about whatever they're feeling. So how is your day today? And, and whether it's great, whether it's neutral, whether it was terrible, for our child to feel comfortable expressing however their day was is helpful in relaying the message that their feelings are valid and that you're interested in whatever is going on for them. A lot of times parents say that, you know, I asked my kid how their day was and they just say fine. Yeah. <laughs> and so yep. sometimes it can be helpful to ask more specific questions or to get creative with the questions like, oh, um, did you ask any interesting questions today? Um, what was a challenge that you had? What was something that was a fun thing for you today? Who did you eat lunch with? You know, what did mm -hmm. you and your friends do? So being more specific about the questions can sometimes help open the door for more. Something else that I always do with my kids is I teach them that our central nervous systems, our bodies communicate to us often what's going on with our mental and emotional state. And so I do ask them, how did you feel today? How did you feel in your body today at school? What about that question for a starter to open up the dialogue? That's beautiful. That's a beautiful question because one, again, it opens up this idea that all feelings are important and valid, and it draws the connection between our emotions and our physical experience. Most of us are often in our heads, whereas our physical bodies, our physical experiences have a lot of important information. And for our children to be building that connection can be so important. Our bodies are talking to us all the time, are they not? Last question for the kids, for the parents, the community that's hurting after this deadly student stabbing and violence. And I, I said it earlier, it's been reported 27 students witnessed this. Where as a community can we begin the healing? Absolutely. And I think one of the important things for us to remember is that for children, for teenagers to feel part of a community can be very healing, can be very supportive. And so being able to have dialogue, to be able to participate in rituals together, to grieve, to be with each other and feelings, for the community to actively reach out and support these individuals and, and each other can be a really uh, helpful um, part of the process of healing. And I'm going to use you as an object lesson, Dr. Pay attention to the doctor, how she talked to us, the tone of her voice, the way she looked right into the camera, how she presented herself physically. It made us all feel safe asking these questions, did it not? Dr. Kurahashi, thank you so much because you've given us cues verbally and non-verbally about how to drop the stigma and have the conversations we need to have in our homes tonight around the dinner table. Much love to you. Thank you so much.